This is Arduino Space Invaders. Let's get started. Is that it? <sighs> Hi and welcome to Historical. I just thought in this episode I'd just show you the progress, the work in progress of the Arduino Arcade Space Invaders. The reason I'm emphasizing Arcade is that I've built a Space Invaders with an Arduino before and here it is using one of these small 128 by 64 OLED screens and with uh, an audio amplifier, speaker, volume control, etc. I'll just quickly show you this version and start it going. So reasonable sounds. And it's, it's not a bad version considering the screen limitations that we've got here. Miss that one. But yeah, so it's, it's not a bad version considering the size of the screen we've got, but I want to make a full version. So let's just move that out of the way and just unplug it as well. And show you uh, this version that I've been working on. If you were a Patreon, I mentioned this uh, some some time ago now, and I also put it onto a YouTube little post thing as well not long ago. So if I plug this in, you'll see that I've tried to replicate the arcade version as much as I can. So this screen, if I remember right, is about two five six by three twenty or something like that. Space Invaders, the resolution of it was 240 by 256, I think, or something around there, about 240 by 250, 240 by 252. Not easy for me to say, 240 by 256. But yeah, this screen's slightly bigger at about 256 by about 320. So we've got some unused areas of the screen, that's fine. I wanted the full resolution of the Arcade, arcade Space Invaders. Now let's plug it in. And you'll see that I've tried to replicate the arcade fairly faithfully. And it just boots. There we go. So the arcade came up with this uh, similar track screen. So insert coin, one or two players, blah, blah. And after this screen, it goes on to another one. Again, this is the same as the arcade version. The arcade version had the upside down Y, and you'll see why in a minute. So yeah, a little space invader comes on, takes that away, brings back the correct one. And that was all on the original arcade version, so I decided to replicate the track screen as much as I could. And then it goes around to this, you might notice now it's going extra C for the word coin, now it says kick coin. And again, this was on the original arcade version, did it just like this, and it'll bring in an invader across the top and destroy the C. Etc. So I've tried to really go to my best. I've copied the original Space Invaders fonts, so the fonts are the same. Um, it still says credit. I'm probably going to implement not a coin slot as such, but we'll implement adding credits with another button. And you may notice we've got some touches of green. Now the original Space Invaders is only two colours, i.e. black and white. And this is obviously a full colour screen. Now I'm not doing anything wrong here, I do want to keep to the original, but the original had a green strip of film put over the black and white screen to make some of the bottom bits green and had a red strip at the top to make some of the red bits red. So I've got a red colour film across there. So the, the, in the original, the colour film green would come up to there and the red just came down to about here where the mothership went across the top as well. So we'll play a quick... Play, uh, again, it's not easy for me to say. We'll play a quick game, so I'll press fire. And now that wasn't the original Space Invaders. But yeah, it's a full version of Space Invaders. There's the red mothership. Again, that would have been implemented with a red piece of film going across the top. And you'll notice that the mothership stayed on at the end. We'll mention that in a minute. There's no signs as yet. It's just the Arduino on the board. But it's coming along nicely. It is a reasonable representation. I've not implemented the invaders dropping bombs on you, which is why I'm making this look pretty easy. And we'll stop there. But yeah, when, the, when this mothership goes to this end, it leaves it on there. That's kind of on purpose, because as I said, the 
The original was only at a resolution of 240 pixels across. So you zoom it off the end of the screen. Now the end of this screen is just beyond this edge here. And the problem was, the edge of the Space Invaders screen is roughly where this line here is. Like that. Right, sorry, just reset it again. So yeah, it comes across the end. And if you imagine the end of that, um, sort of like more than symbol there after the two, that's where the original end of the screen was. So you wouldn't see this. And if I was to implement it, so the ship disappeared at the end of this part of the screen where it should, it actually required quite a bit more coding to do that. Because by default, the graphics library I'm using, which is the Adafruit graphics library, doesn't have any sort of commands to just print or plot part of the graphics. Oh, I couldn't be bothered. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some insulation tape on, and I'll show you what you can do for that. If, when the actual Arduino is booting up, you press and hold fire, it'll draw your little grid. So I'll just reset. I'll press and hold fire. Let go when it's come up. So this is the limits of the actual Space Invaders screen. It will not go beyond that in the bottom direction. And it won't go beyond that in that direction. So I'm just going to get some, when I actually build my cab and stuff, I'm going to get some black tape and just pop it on there and I'll show you what, how that would work. So you just come along on that test screen and just put on your mask. And just mask out that. See, maybe when you build your project, you don't use the exact same screen as I have. You may have an even slightly bigger one, so you may want to mask off at that side. I mean, I would then trim this down like that, all the way down neatly, so it's just one black, nice, neat bar at the end. And you could put one across the bottom, and I probably will for, for just keep things the same. So it hides this brightness of this glow from the LCD here as well. So I'll do that. And we'll just pop that on the bottom. Probably will spend more time being careful and line this up than I have done now, just for a quick demo. And again, yeah, I'll just trim these off so it's just like that. So let's reboot the game. There we go. And now, when we play the game, we'll see that the red shape just looks like it disappears off the screen, like it would have normally done on the original Space Invaders. And there's one perfect. So we'll go back and we'll just reset one more time. So one thing I'll actually show you is a comparison between this screen and the actual arcade version. So I'm going to put them both on screen now, just keep them paused, and I'll start them off both going. So I've videoed this, and I've videoed the arcade version, we'll play them side by side and just see how similar they are. Timings are going to be obviously a little bit different, I've not tweaked them exactly, but they're not too bad. And obviously we've got the upside down Y. And you can see how both of them are quite similar. So that's basically it. I am not releasing the code for this yet. I know I might get people asking for the source code. The source code will come when this project is completely finished. That's because in the old Space Invaders, based on this one, I actually did about 15 videos and 15 separate articles on my website extronical.com and that took a lot of effort and work i've mentioned just after christmas i want to get more videos out which means producing less written content on the actual website so i will only produce one article for this completed game which will be the circuit diagram for everything including the coin slot buttons the audio amplifier and speaker etc and the full source code for the then finished project before that I won't be releasing any code we'll just do a work in progress uh, the next thing I'm going to work on in this it does actually look like it's pretty much a fully finished version it's not there are various issues on gameplay not on the on this part but on gameplay there are various issues I mean this that screen wanted to go there needs to be correcting but um, the invaders firing bombs back is easy because it's actually implemented I've just literally turned it off for testing to make sure it don't actually drop on me but when the invaders get down to here, they correctly start doing the um, destroying the base as they should do. But when they get to actually the player, they don't intercept the player correctly. Um, what else is wrong? I think that's more or less it. So it's not a million miles away apart from the biggie actually, which is adding in the sound. Because I'm hoping to pinch some 
technology for my DAC audio project, which usually runs on an ESP32 or a reasonably powerful microprocessor unit, uh, microcontroller, and not using Arduino, which is absolutely memory starved, especially if you're doing digital audio sounds. However, there is room and scope because a lot of the space invaders sounds are just repeating sounds. So I can dig digitize a small amount of that sound and, and play it back over a uh, digital, digital, digital to analog converter. Then we'll have some pretty much proper arcade sound as well. So that's where I'm going with this. If you want to start buying things, obviously in Arduino, and this is, um, gosh, what screen is this? I think it's an SPI, it's a nine, no, I'm, I'm making it up as I go along, can't remember. It's a ILI9341 based screen driver I'm using. But you could use another type of screen. As long as it has that resolution and you can use the 80 foot drivers, 80 foot graphics, then you should be fine using any sort of screen you want, as long as it's got the minimum resolution met. And that's it for now. So I hope that has been of interest. I anticipate probably completely finishing this in between three and six weeks with other little projects and other little uh, videos in between. And there you are, I can see a little bug that's happened there as it's finished the game. We've racked up a load of extra lives across the bottom. The maximum lives you could have on Space Invaders was four. You started off with three, and then you could gain an extra one at 1,500, I think it was, points. 1,500 or 3,000, one of those. And that was it. You had that maximum of four. So yeah, slight bug there. So a few things to correct, but it's not a million miles away. Hope that's been of interest. Thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Wouldn't do anything, any of this without viewers. And if you like this video and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you want to share it, please share. If you want to join Patreon, can do if you want. That'd be great. If not, thanks again for watching.